everyone, you're watching The Thursday Show. I'm Pastor Chelsea and I'm so glad that you're joining us this week on this amazing Thursday. So over the past few weeks, we've been talking about habits, how to create habits, the process that a habit takes, both good or bad, to develop within us. And today I wanted to wrap up that conversation by talking about how we can actually set a goal or a habit that we're likely to follow through on because we're a couple weeks into January now and it's possible that maybe you've fallen off the bandwagon on some of those New Year's resolutions. I know I already have too. So how can we practically set habits and goals that we're going to stick to? And I was having a conversation with our own Pastor Brian this past week and it was really cool because he brought up a verse that goes along so perfectly with this whole conversation about habits and goals. Maybe it's one that you've heard before, but didn't even realize how closely it ties into this conversation. I want to read it to you. It's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. What's really cool is, as you start to look at the words in that verse, and look at how they were originally written in their original language of Hebrew, which is what Proverbs was originally written in, we start to get a better picture of what these words mean. In verse 6, where it talks about, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths, the picture is actually one of habits. In all your ways, in all your habits, in all the things that you routinely do over and over without thinking about it, in all of those things, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your paths. That word paths gives us the picture of almost kind of like a pathway through the wilderness. It's been, it's been put there by how many times people have repeated going over that path over and over. And so when you hear this verse in the future or even other verses where it talks about ways or paths, maybe start to switch the way your brain looks at these words and thinks about them as habits and routines. Well, last week I promised that I would give you a framework to set goals that we can actually achieve, and I want to fulfill that promise. I did not create this content myself. It's actually been around quite a while, and it's kind of even hard to pinpoint who originally came up with the SMART goals framework. I've heard quite a few different speakers, presenters, books refer to it, and I think it is incredibly helpful. For me, I first heard from it from Michael Hyatt. He's a Christian businessman who has all sorts of things on goals and productivity. Totally recommend checking him out if that sort of stuff nerds you out the way it does for me. But SMART goals is just an acronym for how we can set goals that we're more likely to achieve. And so I'm going to break down each letter for you and give you some examples on how you can do this with your goals that you have this year. So SMART goals. Let me give it to you fast and then we'll break down each word. SMART goals means you set a goal that is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time sensitive. Let's break those down one by one. Specific. If we want to set goals that we're likely to achieve, we have to get specific with our goals. To me, this is probably the most important letter of the whole acronym because too often, whether it's a goal or a habit, we start out really vague and then we don't know if we've hit the goal because we've set it in such a vague way. Let me give you an example. A lot of times people will say, I want to read more. That's really vague. If I mean, if you weren't going to read anything and then you read one page, I guess reading one page is reading more than no pages. But I don't think that's often what people mean when they say they want to read more. So to get specific with a goal needs to add, to, add some structure to it so you know whether or not you've met that goal. So one of my goals this year was to read more, but I knew I needed to get more specific than that. So I set the goal as to read five pages a day right when I climb into bed before I fall asleep. That's really specific. And now because I've been so specific, I know whether or not I've hit that goal. I know whether or not I read before I went to bed last night. I don't think I did. But you get the idea. We have to be specific if we're going to actually hit these goals. Some other ways or examples that people do this is say, oh, I want to communicate with my spouse better. Well, that's a good goal, but it's still kind of vague. 
So to make it more specific would be, I'm going to talk 30 minutes with uninterrupted conversation with my spouse at dinner. That's really specific. Now you know whether you've hit it. A vague goal would be, I want to get organized this year. But to make it more specific would to be to say, I'm going to spend 10 minutes a day after I eat lunch cleaning out a drawer or a closet. Those are ways to make your goals more specific and you're going to find if you're specific with your goal, it's a lot easier to know whether you've hit it or not. Let's go to the next letter, M, measurable. Goals need to not only be specific, but they need to be measurable as well. And these two kind of go hand in hand because the measurable factor lets you know whether or not you're hitting it. A lot of times to make a goal more measurable simply means to add a number into it so that you can know whether you're hitting it or not. With my reading goal, the measurable factor is the five pages. I know if I read five pages, I've hit my goal every single day. So if you have a goal, find a way to make it measurable. If your goal is to lose weight, give it a specific measure to it. Say, I want to lose 10 pounds by May 1st. That makes it measurable. And if a goal is measurable, then we can know whether or not we've hit it. A, achievable. Is your goal something that you can actually do? Because you have to set a goal that you can actually obtain. Me saying, I want to save a million dollars by next year, great goal, probably not very achievable on my pastor's salary. So make sure you're setting goals that are doable, that you can realistically achieve. Saying, I want to run a marathon next weekend, <sighs> probably not gonna happen unless you're already in shape. But if I say, I want to run a marathon by October, that gives me time to prepare now and pace myself so that I can achieve that goal later on. And that's part of what this does, is when we set these goals that are specific, measurable, and achievable, it makes us work backwards from the deadlines that we set for ourselves and figure out every day, how can we break down steps into small pieces so that we can aim towards our bigger habit or goal. The next letter is R, relevant. We need to set a goal that is relevant. I've also sometimes heard people use the R as risky. I think both of these words work well in this space because we need to have a goal that is relevant to our lifestyle, to our choices, to our uh, the settings that we're currently in. You know, if you're a mom raising kids right now, the goals you set need to be relevant to that phase of life. Whereas if you're single and working in a career, you need to also set goals that are relevant to where you're at in life. So make sure no matter where you're at, that your goals are relevant to who you are and what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. And make sure they're kind of risky. We should have goals that excite us, that aren't easy to achieve in a matter of moments or days, but that we have to work towards and develop something within ourselves in order to reach them. The last letter I've got for you, T, is time sensitive. To make your goals time sensitive simply means to add a time frame to them. So if you have a habit goal, choosing the time each day or each week that you're going to achieve it makes it time sensitive. But if you have a goal driven goal, you know, wanting to do something at a certain date, adding a deadline to it provides some motivation to be working ahead and knowing that it's coming. So let me give you some examples of each of these. A time sensitive habit goal might be to spend time with God each day. Well, by making it time sensitive, let's figure out what time you're going to do that goal. Say, I'm going to spend time with God as soon as I wake up and after I brew my cup of coffee, then I will sit down at the table and spend my time with God. That does all of those things of making it specific making it measurable, you know when and where you're doing it, it makes it a lot easier for you to hit that goal. Now let's say you have more of a goal you're trying to reach. Maybe your goal is to read through the New Testament. Well, making that goal time sensitive simply means to give yourself a deadline. I want to read through the New Testament by December 31st of this year. When we add the time sensitive component, we're putting deadlines for ourselves in place. And that's not meant to feel limiting, 
but it's meant to be freeing because then we don't have to think each and every single day when we'll do the thing, how we'll meet our goal. It's already built into our lives for us. And that's the beauty and freedom that comes with habits and goals. Now, if you wanted to take all of this information and take it to the next level, I'd encourage you to maybe write down some of your goals and put them through this SMART goals framework. Figure out, is your goal specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and risky and time sensitive? Look at your goal and find ways to have it meet all of those criteria. And if you do, you're going to be more likely to achieve your goal. Not only that, there's statistics and reports that show that we are 42% more likely to retain information and to hit our goals when we simply write things down. 42% more likely just by writing something down. So write down your goals, put them somewhere where you're going to see them, where you can review them and make sure that they're specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time sensitive. If you're 42% more likely to achieve a goal simply by writing it down, then I'd encourage you to take it a step further and share what is your goal or habit that you want to achieve this year in the comments. It provides a little bit of accountability. It also might spur somebody else on to come up with new habits or goals they hadn't dreamed of. So if you're feeling bold, and if you want to commit to making these habits and goals stick, tell me what is your habit or goal for this year in the comments. I can't wait to read through the comments and see what some of your habits and goals are. Because as we share them with one another, as we write them down, make them public, keep them in front of us, that is a simple way that in all our ways, we can acknowledge the Lord and let Him direct our paths. I hope this encouraged you today, and I'm excited for you as you develop some new goals for yourself this year. Well, everyone, I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Until then, have a good one.